Hi, how are you? My name is Carl Pierre. I'm a private pilot based out of Ronkonkoma, New York at MacArthur Airport, and I'm the proud owner of this 1963 Piper Cherokee 235. Now, I got into flying, uh, or I guess the flying bug bit me, because I had a professor, Dr. Lawrence Reinstein out of Stony Brook uh, University. He's not there anymore, but he was a pilot. I went to his office one day, and I saw a bunch of, like, pilot paraphernalia and I was like what are you really into airplanes? He's like no I'm a pilot and that was the very first time that I met someone who was a private pilot in their private life and they weren't just flying for the airlines. So he told me about the you know freedom of owning your own aircraft and one thing that I remember him telling me was that I could buy an aircraft for the same price of a fully loaded Honda Accord and that blew my mind because I thought I would have to be super wealthy or something along those lines to one day have my air own airplane and be a private pilot. So that was the first, uh, I guess, introduction into flying. But what he did was recommend that I go out for a discovery flight, which is where you go up with a flight school, they let you fly. From day one, you actually take off the airplane, fly around, they give you the controls, and it lets you see if this is for you or not. You know, if you freak out on the ground first day, it may not be for you. So the discovery flight is something that a lot of the flight schools do from the very beginning, just to make sure that this is something that you want to really invest your time in. Fast forward 10 years later, I was uh, just on vacation and going through my Facebook, and on Facebook, I got a reminder that 10 years ago, I took this discovery flight, and that was in 2017. And I asked myself, you know, what the hell have I been doing for the past 10 years that I took my discovery flight and I didn't actually follow through and, and get my instruction. Um, I'm pretty impulsive, so at that time I said, you know what, what am I wasting time for? When I got back in town, went to uh, Academy of Aviation, which is a flight school out of Republic Airport, plopped down 40 hours of flight time and instruction, and said, let's get started. I was flying three days a week, um, and I was progressing through my flight training pretty quickly until I decided that it was time for me to buy my own airplane. So the initial cost was 40 hours up front, or you could, you could rent you know, by the hour, but the better deal was to buy blocks of time. So since I had used up my first block of time, I was stuck with the decision as to whether I buy another 20 hours to complete my flight training, or invest in my own airplane since I had the money to do so. And I thought it would be a really good idea just to get my own airplane, so I'm only playing for the instructor. So my search for an airplane started. I was flying a Diamond DA-20, which is a two-seat, really nice airplane, really great trainer, and my first thought was to graduate into a DA-40. So I went shopping on controller.com, I found a nice DA-40 based out of Florida. They were asking about $120,000 for it, and at the time, I had the, all the money in cash, ready to go, and I contacted the seller and showed them proof of funds, as you normally would, or ability to pay. And I told him I'd be securing financing to make the purchase. I didn't want to go out right with cash. So I contacted, uh, I forget what finance company it was, and we started going through the process. The fact that I was a student pilot and I was looking to finance the aircraft through my company, which was definitely performing at the time, and still is actually, um, they had a problem with me actually securing financing because my partners weren't pilots and I myself was still a student pilot. So they said this is not a loan that they would write and that was the end of that deal. I didn't want to plop down a full 120k, worry about you know a refinance or, or trying to secure financing down the line. I don't like to have my money trapped like that. So I said, well, what are my other options? Since I intended to put down the 20% requirement for the, the aircraft, I decided let me start shopping for an airplane that I could buy outright cash um, and use my down payment of a few extra dollars just so I wouldn't have to deal with that circus again of not being able to get financing for my plane. So then that led me to this aircraft. I went back to controller.com and started looking at aircrafts that were low wing like a DA-20. I was looking at Grumman's and Cherokee's. And I decided that I was going to go with the Cherokee because it's a more popular plane. There's more of them out there, more options. And of course, started going to Google, looking into what Cherokee would be the best for me. Now, as a student pilot, my dream was to fly around the world. And I wanted to get an airplane that could allow me to build really long cross-country time in preparation for this world rounder. So, in researching, found out that the Cherokee 235, which has a six-cylinder engine, 
also has an impressive useful load of over 1400 pounds and that would be perfect for carrying ferry tanks and getting really long distances. So after figuring out which Cherokee I wanted, I went back to controller.com and came across this plane, which was for sale by Aircraft Ownership Solutions, which is a company out of Indiana. Now, <clears throat> we settled on a price of, I believe I paid 35,000 for this aircraft. It's again, a 1963 Piper Cherokee 235. And that's really on the cheap end. That was probably the cheapest one that I saw on controller.com. So we agreed on our price. I flew out to Kokomo, Indiana with my flight instructor. We flew the plane back, <laughs> even though we flew into some really horrible weather. Flew into a thunderstorm right over Pennsylvania. Had to divert, but that's really taught me what real cross-country flying would be like. Not the 50 and 150 mile cross countries that you're dealing with in flight training, but really covering some ground. So that was from Indiana to New York. On our way back in, we flew into a thunderstorm had to divert to uh, an airport in Pennsylvania, wait the storm out before making our way back home. But it was really a good experience for me. So that purchase took place in August of 2017. So I've been the owner of this aircraft for about a year and a half. And I'll tell you, when you get an older aircraft that is on the cheaper side, you're gonna come into a lot of maintenance issues, just bringing it up to date. There's gonna be a lot of things that are old, a lot of things falling apart, a lot of things that you wanna get cleared up because you are flying, you wanna make sure that your aircraft is safe. Um, I usually use this airplane to fly anywhere from, you know, 100 nautical miles to 400 nautical miles at a time. It does carry 84 gallons of fuel, burning about 15 gallons an hour. So I really could get about five hours of range out of it, taking me about 800 miles. The longest or the furthest that I've taken it so far is New York to Atlanta. Um, I've taken it to New Hampshire, North Carolina, Virginia a few times, and it really manages that flight pretty well. I'm usually burning around 12 to 14 gallons an hour at 75% getting anywhere between 130 and 150 miles an hour. Now I bought this one with its massive useful load because I wanted to use it on longer flights if I wanted to ferry into Bermuda or somewhere else. But I also want to fly around with my friends. That doesn't happen. I was, like, I was focused on getting a four seater, focused on carrying some weight, wanted to load it up with some guys. Um, I'm usually flying around by myself. So burning 14 gallons an hour isn't that exciting. If I could do it all over again, I'd probably get an experimental, something that's really light on the gas, but has the speed. And it's gonna be usually me, maybe one other flying around more often. They're cheaper, uh, cheaper to maintain, faster, modern avionics, modern things. If I could do it again, I would go that route. This airplane I think is perfect for somebody who's gonna be doing cross country flying, um, and who's going to be carrying around a lot of weight. That is the ideal mission for this plane.